In this video, we're going to work on an example of a plate with a circular hole in the middle of it, which is applied, which is exposed to tensile loading on its ends. So let's start working on that problem. First, I have to go to prep seven and select the element type. So ET reference number one and the element type. I want to pick 183 again for plane 183 and I want to set the behavior of this element type to plane strain again just for practicing purposes no particular reason so key option element type reference number is one and the key option number is three number is two so if I come again here to look at element type element type reference number is one plane 183 if I click on options element behavior key option three the value is 2 because it starts from 0, so 0, 1, 2 is the plane strain. So I cancel this. Information for this is found in the help documentation of ANSYS where you could look for those data. Now I have to define the material properties. So MP for material property, I want to apply uh, or define the Young's modulus, EX for isotropic, and then the material reference number is 1, and the value I want to give let's say 49 E9, 49 gigapascals. Then I want to give the Poisson ratio. So MP, material property, PR, XY, Poisson ratio in Y direction, or XY plane. Reference number one, and the value is 0.27. Now I want to create key points for my model. So I have a circular hole, so I want to create an arc, and lines to create the rectangle which uh, would have that hole in the middle of it. So I create key point and I let ANSYS pick the key point number which is going to be 1 by default because there's no key points defined for me yet. I'm going to say 0, 0, 0 for the X and Y and Z of the key point. So the key point 1 is created there, I can't see it. The next key point I want to create at 0 0.03, so 3 centimeter for the radius of my circle, y0 and z0. So if I move this, you can see the key point to select or create it there. And then the next key point is going to be at x of 0, y of 0 0.03, and z of 0. So of those key points, 1, 2, 3. I want to create a key point at x of point 0.1, y0, zero, and z0. Zero. So this key point is created here. I will create a line between key points 2 and 4. The next key point I want to create at x.1, point y.1, point and z0. So it is there. And finally, key point from or at point x0, y.1, point and z0. So I have all the key points that I need for this model. First thing I want to do is to create a key point between, or a line, which is an arc between key points 2 and 3. So LA arc, or L arc, between key points 2 and 3 at the center key point of 1, which was here, and the radius is 0 0.03, which is the distance between key points 1 and 2, and key points 1 and 3. If I create that, the arc is made for me. Now I want to create a key point or a line between key points 4 and 2 and pay attention to how I'm doing this. I say L, the first key point is 4 and the second one is 2. So basically I'm defining this one as key point, the first key point and this one is the end key point. And if I press enter, a line is created. You will see why I did that later in this example. Then I want to create a key point or a line between key points 4 and 5. So I can say L, 4 and 5, and here I don't really care about the directions. And also L, 5 and 6. But then again, when I want to create a, key po a line between key points 3 and 6, I say 6, 3. Now the next thing I want to do is to create uh, an area with these lines 
so I can say al all all the lines are created or an, an area is created with all the lines so I want to select lines 4 or lines 2 and 5 so if I do L plot and do PNOM to show the line numbers and do replot I want to select these two lines 2 and 4 or 2 and 5 and select line divisions I say L cell select lines and I leave this as uh, is no component and the first one is 2 the second one is 5 and the increment is 3 so it's going to select lines 2 and 5 for me if I do L plot it shows that only two lines are selected in the set the command to define line division is called LE size and then number of line or line number I say all because I've selected all the nodes I leave size and ang size empty so I put two commas for nothing and then I give the division number 30 but what I want to do is to make my mesh finer here and coarser here so at the two far ends I want to have coarser mesh but at the close ends of the circle I want to have a finer mesh so I gave a spacing ratio of 0.1 which means the element size here the the farthest element size the closest element element to the circle will be one tenth of the size of the element that is the farthest away from the circle and you can see that in the division so I have a finer division here and the coarser division there now do all cell Now I do LE size again for this line. So let me first do L plot so we can see all the lines. So I want to divide this line into 30 segments. So if I do LE size 1 and just give 30 it's going to be the division of the lines uh, or, or line 1 there now in order to apply mapped meshing to make a good element shape after meshing I want to merge lines 3 and 4 so that line 3 and 4 will be mapped, mapped to line 1 the command for that is LCCAT but before that I want to select the two lines I want to say L cell S line 3 and 4 so right now I'm selecting all only lines 3 and 4 and press enter if I do L plot I can say LE size all so all the lines that I selected and give 15 because this is 15 this is 15 makes 30 and that line was divided into 30 segments so if I press 15 here and then do all cell and then L plot now I want to do I want to merge lines 3 and 4 so I do L C C A T lines 3 and 4 so these two lines will be looked at as one line now if I do a mesh one with the element type so let me actually do a better practice here if I say type one which means activate element type reference one mat one which means activate element type or material mo model one and I don't need to define E size because I have divided all of my lines into segments if I do a mesh I only have one area so I can do one now you can see my element or my area is mapped meshed so these 30 segments of, of this line 
are mapped to the 30 segments of the lines 3 and 4 combined. So this is called mapped meshing. When you have two lines uh, on one end and one line on the other end, you map the mesh between the two lines. Now what I want to do is apply half model symmetry here. So basically I want to say this line, which is at y0, doesn't move in the y direction because of symmetry. And this line at x equals 0 doesn't move in the x direction because of symmetry due to the boundary conditions applied to it, or symmetrical boundary conditions. So if I do n cell s location, which means select nodes at location, and y0, which means select nodes at y equals 0, if I do n plot to show what I have, these are only the lines at y equals 0, right? I can say d all ui, which means degrees of freedom for all the nodes in the y direction is 0. I do all cell and e plot. Now I want to select the nodes on this line, which I could say n cell s location of x equals 0. So select all the nodes by location where x is equal to 0. Again, and plot and say d degree of freedom of all the nodes in x direction is 0. All cell e plot. Now, what I want to do is apply a surface force, basically a stress, on that surface. So I do n cell s location of y at point 1, which is where these lines are, or these nodes are, do n plot, and say SF as surface force for all the nodes, type pressure, and I want to give a negative value because negative value of pressure is actually a tensile pressure. So I want to give negative 1000, which means a thousand tensile pressure applied to that. That li red line shows the pressure, and then I can do all cell and e plot. Now everything is ready for solution. So I finish post processing or pre processing, start solution, and there's nothing specific that I have to apply in here. I can say n type for analysis type, static for steady state, and then solve. The analysis is completed. I can go to post processing, back to slash one. Let me get rid of that dot over there. And now I'm in post processing. I can show the stresses by PL for plot, N or E for nodal or element. I do, let's do nodal. Solution, S for stress, and Y for stress in the Y direction. So this is the stress in the y direction due to the force that was or the, the pressure that was applied on the surface. I can also do uh, plot, let's this time do element solution. EQV show for equivalent, which is von Mises, and I can show those values. Now let's define a path here along this length and see the distribution of stress from this point to that point um, of um, the, the model. I can do path and give a name to it, path 1, with two points. Number of sets, I want to say 30, which is default. Number of outputs or, or results, I want to map to this path. A number of divisions, I want to give 100, though it's probably overkill, but it's okay. Now the next command is ppath, which is point for a path, first point, and I don't know the node number, but I know the um, x, y, and z coordinates, so it's at point three, point zero three x, 0 and 0 for y, and coordinate system is Cartesian by default, I'm not going to change that one. Now the next path, or next point, 
for pPath, point 2, is at x of point 1, y of 0, and z of 0. Now I want to define a stress, p def. Let's call it s underscore y, s y a v g. So this is the label we gave to it. This is the item which is stress, and this is the component of stress which is in y direction. I'm saying to average it. Let's create another one. I want to do e q v for equivalent of stress, and change the label accordingly. Now, if I do pl path. I can, plat, I can plot up to six labels on top of each other. So SY and SEQV, I can plot them on the same plot. And this is how the stresses change along the length of that, along that path. So the, the cyan plot is the SY and the purple line is the equivalent or no von Mises stresses, which is very high at the vicinity of the circle. And as we go further from it, it goes, it, it decreases. I can also do PR path, do S, Y, let me close this, and S, E, Q, V, and now these are the same values that are listed for me. I can save them. I can save this one as any name that I want. And also with a txt and then convert it or import it to MATLAB, Python or Excel to do more post processing. So in this video, we'll learn how to create a plate with a hole in the, in the center of it. We learned how to apply mapped meshing, define a path, map something to the path, and plot and print the path stuff.